So I'm trying to do a, um, a bit of B-roll for this video. Unfortunately, the grass is a bit rubbish. Also, there's loads of uh, sheep poo everywhere, but... So hopefully that will work. Now, onto the video. So let's look at the photograph. Now, the color between the reference photograph and the painting or the blocking of the painting is slightly different. Um, but one of the things I can see in there is, although that foreground isn't that, there isn't a great deal of contrast. There's less, less contrast in the foreground than there is in the trees, for example. There are some darker elements in there. Now, what I don't want to do is go over the whole thing with the dark and then have to um, put the lights over the top. So all I'm going to do is using the series 771 size 1 from Rosemary & Co, I'm going to add just the darker elements where I can see them. Going to put in probably centimetre long lines in roughly the same direction. I mean they're all vertical but not. I'm not at all being precise just to begin with, and then we can go ahead and maybe add a few uh, in that direction, moving upward strokes. But let's get just the body of that in first of all. Now remember what we were saying, we don't want it to be um, too dark at this point. Now another thing I'm going to say is, looking at the grass in the photograph, it's long, it's really long grass. Now we need to try and paint it as we see it and not how we think it should be painted. For example, as you can see here, doing these shorter lines here, you can't actually see it's only there's a there's a very few there are very few lines and it's usually the dead grasses over the top which are one long continuous line. The darks that we're putting in, they don't need to be. They can be much smaller. And what's going to make it look long is the fact that the brush marks that we're put, putting in are all going in roughly the same direction. Shorter grass tends to be more choppy, so it's more like that. Okay, so now we've put in the more mid-tones. I'm going to go with the darks now. So just adding to that mix, we've got the sap green, the thinner, and we're just going to now add a small amount of ivory black, just enough to give us those darker tones that are just right in the deepest parts of that long grass there. And once again, we don't want to be do too much with this, this uh, dark paint here. We don't want to change the overall appearance of that. It's not far off the colour and the tone that it needs to be. We just need to, as I say, fill in those dark areas. There aren't many of them. Okay, right, now let's go in with the lighter colours again. So I'm going to clean the brush out, get rid of all of that dark paint on there. Now, what I've been using for the lighter areas is this here, which is phthalo green yellow shade. It's a really livid green, and we're just going to add some thinner to that. 
and then some of that Windsor yellow. Make sure you've got the right consistency again, still keeping that ink consistency, making sure that's all mixed in on the palette. And that might be actually slightly too green. I think what we'll do is I'm just gonna add the smallest bit of white and I'm gonna pull the color down a little bit by adding some ivory black. So the black and the white is gonna desaturate it a little bit. And then I'm just gonna go over this area now by adding some of these highlights. Just using the very tip of the brush there. I'm looking at the photograph every few seconds really just to make sure that everything's going where it should do. And this is just going to be one of many layers so we don't need for it to look perfect on this first first uh, layer really, or second, second or third layer I suppose it is, but we, we're gonna go over it again. Um, and one of the things I'm also doing, the lighter I'm going with this, the paint is thickening up ever so slightly. Now that paint's not thick, but there is certainly less thinner with it, um, or with these light, while well, I'm putting in these lighter tones. Um, and the consistency, I suppose, is just on the dry side of an ink. You would never be able to push that through a, through a pen. Um, so I'm keeping the brush, I'm kind of sharpening the brush a little bit by getting that same sharp edge rather than the flat. We've got the sharp edge and I'm running that sharp edge along the panel there. And that's what's giving us that much tighter line. Now you might or you might not be able to see from the mixture on the palette just how much thicker this paint is now, the lighter paint that we can see here. Um, it's got really no thinner with it at all. Um, I'm still doing the same technique, so I'm flattening out that brush as you can see there. And that's putting a certain amount on the, on the tip and then what I'm doing is I'm kind of doing almost like a joggy motion and I find by doing that you tend to get less of it if I just do one continuous sweep you'll get a much more of a broken line so by doing that motion more like that so it's there and then I'm pushing I'm, I'm pushing down like that as I move up the panel that's essentially what I'm doing and how that line is so tight and thick. It's a very, very thin brush mark. Very, very thin, but it's got the thickness of paint and it's very difficult to get that thickness of paint unless you're pushing against a panel like that. <laughs> 